Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Milwee, uh, Trinity, Alabama, Mount View Baptist Church. Uh, thanks for joining me this morning. I want to uh, uh, continue today our study that we're calling Bible Study uh, Methods. Uh, but before I, I do that, let me uh, say, uh, you know, I was just thinking in my quiet time this morning, uh, uh, how wonderful it is to have the internet. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of bad things about the internet, but you know, this is one of the good things that uh, we can share a Bible study lesson uh, for those who are interested. And, and I appreciate those of you who uh, join me uh, each week. And, uh, you know, I'm just continuing to do these. I, my, my thought is if, if it helps one person, uh, then it'll be worth all the time and energy and effort. So thank you uh, for joining me uh, today. I, I came across an interesting survey that was uh, conducted by uh, Tyndall House Publishers. Uh, of course, you know, they publish a lot of Bibles. And uh, according to uh, the survey, uh, people who read their Bible regularly experience more joy, contentment, and peace than those who seldom or never read uh, the Bible. Uh, in addition, they found that people who read their Bible express more satisfaction in li with life in general, and, and they're more optimistic, uh, and also that they feel closer to the Lord. Yet, despite this information, I'm, I'm afraid too many of us are like the uh, home that I read about. Uh, the story goes that a little boy saw a um, large dust-covered book sitting high up on a shelf in his house, and so his curiosity, you know, was aroused, and so he asked his mother about it, and his mom said, oh, that's the Bible. That's the good book. That's God's book. Well, the little boy thought about it for just a minute, and he said, well, if it's God's book, why don't we give it back to him, because nobody around here is using it. <laughs> now, without embarrassing anyone, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, when was the last time you read your Bible? Do you make it a daily practice? Would your children be surprised if they walked into the room and saw you reading it? Is God's Word honored in your home? Maybe you've heard the expression, um, if your Bible is in good shape, then you're probably not. Well, I hope that doesn't uh, uh, describe you. And I also hope the Bible has not become the forgotten book in your home. In fact, I came across something at a home interior uh, store a few years ago that I just had to buy it because I think it's a classic example. And, and here it is. You can see it. it. It looks just like a Bible. In fact, it looks very worn and, and used and, and everything. But uh, you might be surprised uh, to discover that it doesn't open at all. It won't open. And actually, if you can hear, hear this, it's as hard as a rock. But... If you're not going to read it, if you're not going to study it, if you're not going to use it, if it's just going to set up on a shelf somewhere collecting dust, then this is the only Bible a lot of people really need. Listen, don't let your home be a place where you could get by with a fake Bible. God gave us his word so that we would read it, so that we would study it, we would meditate upon it, we would memorize it, we would apply it to our lives. It's a book to be used, not just to be placed up on a shelf uh, somewhere. So, as I said a moment ago, we're continuing our study today that I'm calling Bible Study Methods. Uh, last week, we talked about why study the Bible. I gave you three reasons uh, to study your Bible. It's essential for spiritual growth. It's essential for spiritual maturity. And then number three, it was essential for spiritual effectiveness. Well, today I want to talk about uh, how to get a handle on God's Word or how to get God's Word uh, into your heart. Uh, the Bible is the most dynamic uh, book that's ever been written. As I sh shared last week, it was written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 different authors. Uh, yet it's clear in its presentation. It's united in its message. It's the most powerful book ever written. I, I came across a testimony uh, that speaks to the power of this book. A, a man who was a former atheist shared how that God's Word changed his life. <clears throat> uh, it, this is how it happened. His brother uh, sent him a Bible with a note, and this is what the note said. It said, I think this book will do you some good. You ought to read it. He said he thought, <clears throat> well, I don't even believe in God. Why would I want to read the Bible? But he was very competitive, and he couldn't resist this challenge from his brother. 
So he started reading it. He said that he began with a very critical spirit, and he would mock and make fun of everything that he read, but he kept on reading. He read all the Old Testament, and then he started in with the New. And as he worked his way through the Gospels, he said that God's Word began to convict and convince him. And when he got to John, chapter 1, verse 1, where the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He got down on his knees and he asked the Lord Jesus Christ into his heart as his personal Lord and Savior. Just by reading the Bible, his life was radically changed and transformed. He went from being a, uh, an atheist all of his life to a firm believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how can we develop a hunger for God's Word? How can we get a handle on this book? How can we uh, get it into our heart? Well, uh, let's begin where others have gone before. In Job chapter 23, verse 12, the Bible says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my portion of food. The prophet Jeremiah writes, Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. And in Psalm 119, verse 103, the psalmist says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, wouldn't you like to have that same kind of passion for the Word of God? Well, I want to talk this stuff for a few minutes this morning about how to really get into God's Word or how to really get a handle on it, how to get it deep down uh, into your heart, how, how to con cultivate a hunger and thirst uh, for the Word of God as is described in these verses. So if you got a sheet of paper, uh, grab a sheet of paper real quick. I'll give you a second. Uh, find a, find a, maybe you got a sheet of, uh, you know, typing paper or print, printer paper laying around somewhere. Uh, so uh, grab grab a piece of paper real quick and, and grab an ink pen. All right, I'll give you a second to do that. I want to give you a really simple illustration today that'll, that'll help you. One, I think you'll be able to remember. Uh, I try to keep it simple, you know. Biggest compliment I ever got, I think, was uh, one time this lady said to me, she said, I usually go down to so-and-so church and hear Dr. So-and-so, but you know, I like to come here and, and hear you because uh, you're so simple. <laughs> okay, so maybe you've got that piece of paper now. All right, just lay it out in front of you. I want you to put your left hand on that piece of paper, okay? Uh, and then take that pen and just trace, trace your hand. Uh, like we used to do in grade school when we were going to, you know, make a turkey at Thanksgiving. Okay? So, Place your left hand on the piece of paper and trace trace your fingers, okay? All right, so uh, now here's what I want you to do. On the digits of your hand there, I want you to write the word heart, H-E-A-R-T, H-E-A-R-T. It ought to look like this, okay? Everybody see that? H-E-A-R-T. We're going to talk about how to get God's Word into your heart, okay? All right, let's begin. Uh, God has made it very easy for us to get His Word into our heart. The first way this happens is by hearing uh, the Word of God. It's really very simple. Um, <clears throat> We hear the Word of God, uh, we hear it preached, uh, we hear it read, uh, we hear it talked about uh, on the internet, uh, you know, on the radio, on television. Uh, so the first step then is to getting it into your heart is you hear it. So the H on the little pinky there uh, in your diagram is uh, hear, H-E-A-R. So you might want to write the full word out there. All right, then if you go over to the thumb, which is on the other side of the hand there, uh, you hear it and then you think. So the T stands for think. So uh, right think there, a T-H-I-N-K. You think about you what you've heard and you allow the word to speak to your heart. Now, uh, let me point out that anybody can do this. You don't even have to be able to read to hear and think about the Word of God. You can have somebody read it to you. You can listen to it on your smartphone, on your iPod, on the radio, on the Internet. You can watch a video. You can be even buy copies of the Bible on CD. You can listen to it anytime you want to. 
Uh, in fact, I've got two or three of those people have given me through the years. I love listening to them. I had a neighbor who was a pastor in Gilroy, California, and uh, he always, um, uh, at night, I would go outside and I'd listen for a minute and I could hear the Bible being read. And it was my pastor friend across the street uh, listening to the Word of God as he was working in his uh, garage. So hear it, think about it, and as you do that, you start getting a little bit of a grip on it, but, you know, that's not a very solid grip. It can come out uh, very easily, so we need to continue uh, to get a stronger grip. Uh, and so to go deeper, uh, the next thing you need to do, the E on the ring finger stands for examine. Examine or read the Word of God. Now, most people are able to do this, but it's surprising how many never actually do it. God's Word can't help you if it's become that forgotten, dust-covered book sitting up high on a shelf somewhere that we talked about a minute ago. Now, people formerly complained that they couldn't understand the language of the Bible, and therefore they didn't read it. But we can't use that excuse anymore. I mean, there are numerous readable translations that are available today, so go out and get you one. So we hear the word, we think about it, we read it or examine it uh, to really let it sink in, though we need to analyze it or study it. That's what the A stands for on your middle finger. Analyze. Now, we do this best, uh, you know, as we spend some time uh, pouring over uh, God's Word. You might also get into a Bible study class or a Sunday school class, but of course you can do this alone. But we need the encouragement and accountability to, of others to be consistent with our study. So as you begin to study the Word of God, it begins to sink into your life and mold and shape you. Uh, you begin to apply the truths of God's Word to your life and enjoy the benefits uh, of studying the Word. And so now, boy, you're starting to really get a, a firm grip uh, on the Word of God. You've, you've heard it, you've thought about it, you've examined it, you, you've uh, studied it, analyzed it. But there's still a couple of other things to do. Uh, the R stands for remember it. Remember it or memorize it. Uh, now, you're not going to always have your Bible with you. But if you've memorized portions of it, then it's always going to be there in your heart to give you the strength that you need in a time of, 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 of difficulty. I can't even tell you how many times that God's Word has, has spoken to me uh, because I've memorized it. I, I've got it hid in my heart so that it can help me. I often share the 23rd Psalm at, at funeral services, and it's always amazing to me how that I can see people mouthing along with the words because they've memorized it. Uh, somewhere along the way in, in their heart. The Bible brings comfort, but not unless we do what it says. So to really get a firm grip on God's Word, we hear it, examine it, analyze it, remember it, think about it. But let's take it one uh, step further. Uh, let's see what the Bible has to say. Uh, step number one here, uh, Mark four twenty three says, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So we hear the word of God, but we are encouraged also to examine it or read it. Revelation 1, 3 says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words, the prophecy of this book. And blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written for the time is near. And then analyze Acts 17, 11. Now, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Now, many translations have their uh, the Bereans. It says the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they received the word with eagerness, examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as a workman, approved, who has no need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if we really want to get a grip on God's word, we hear it, examine it, analyze it, and then number four, remember it. Or memorize it. Uh, Psalm 119. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's verse 11. And then Deuteronomy 6.6. 6, and these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. And then again, finally, think about it. Psalm 1, beginning verse 1. 
Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season. Its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So we see that God's word tells us how we can really get into it, how we can get a firm grip on it, how that we can really get it deep down uh, into our heart. But there's one more thing that, that we really need to do if we really want it to make a difference in our life. We need to apply what it says. So right there in the center of your hand, write the word apply, A-P-P-L-Y, apply. Because again, the Bible was meant to be used. And it's not doing us any good sitting up on a shelf. We've got to use it and apply it to our lives. In fact, you might want to write across the bottom of your page, interpretation without application equals stagnation. Interpretation without application equals stagnation. Unfortunately, that's where a lot of people are in their Christian life because they're, they're very familiar with the Word of God, but they're not doing what it says. They're not applying it to their lives, and that's why their Christian life is, is stagnant. It's not what it needs to be. In fact, Jesus says this in Luke 6, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears the Word and does them, I'll show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and when a flood arose, the streams broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But, now listen, the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was, was great. I believe every church ought to have the words of James 1.22 posted over the exits. It says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. In fact, I like that verse better in the NIV. It says, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. <laughs> uh, I heard the following testimony at a Gideon banquet a few years ago. A young man shared how that uh, a Gideon simply giving him a Bible as he walked across the campus at UCLA changed his life forever. He was a young man who had done very well according to the world's standards. He had graduated from UC Berkeley with honors in accounting. He had he'd immediately gone to work for one of the big eight accounting firms. He had worked hard with big plans and dreams uh, uh, for his life to climb the corporate ladder. But he soon found uh, that satisfaction in life doesn't, doesn't just come from having a lot of stuff. So in his pursuit to reach the top, he, he acquired a drinking problem. He said it started innocently enough at cocktail parties and business dinners, but then it got worse and worse. He went back to school to work on his master's degree, and one afternoon when he was about at the end of his rope, a Gideon handed him a copy of the New Testament, and in the page of that New Testament, he found what he was looking for. I'll always remember that testimony because tears started rolling down his eyes, at, at his cheeks as he reached into his pocket and he pulled out that New Testament that that man gave to him. And as he held that little New Testament there in his hands with tears streaming down his face, he said, in this book, I found the answers to the problems in life that I was facing. And of course, he gave his heart and life to Jesus and his life's never been the same. Listen, there are life-changing words in this book uh, that will change your life uh, forever. You know what? There was a time when people had an excuse for not reading and studying their Bible. It was written in a language that they could not read or understand. There were limited numbers of copies available, and in many places, the only copy in town was chained to the pulpit at the local church. But today, we're without excuse when we neglect to read, study, memorize, meditate, and apply God's Word to our lives. This is a basic that we need, all need to understand. You can't grow as a Christian if you never open God's Word. So, so let me close with this challenge uh, today. A few years ago, I read a dieting book, and it said that the key to losing weight is exercise, and it does not have to be strenuous. 
The author, who was a physician, prescribed 30 minutes of walking each day and then gave page after page after page of benefits of doing so. But then he said this, and I've never forgotten it. He said, if you don't have time to do this, then you have to be willing to admit that the problem is the fact that you're not out of time, but the fact that your life is so out of control that you can't budget enough time for your own personal health and well-being. Well, here's what I took him to mean. Don't pretend to be concerned about your health if you can't muster up 30 minutes a day to do something about it. Well, friends, I believe the same is true when it comes to God's Word and our spiritual lives. Don't pretend that you want to grow in your spiritual life if you can't find a few minutes each day to spend in God's Word. My prayer today is that God will give us a hunger and a thirst to spend time in His Word each and every day. God bless you. Thank you for watching today.